Lord Premanandi, Hayari Bong, Jayon Vishnu Pad, Padamahang, Supadavraja, God, Charja, Asitara, Sata Sri Shiman. This can be with you, Founder, Charja, of Iron Grace. Nitya Lila Prabhupada, Om Vishnu Pad, of Iron Grace, Shila Bhakti, Siddhanta, Saraswati, Thakur, Prabhupada, Kijai. Ananta Koti, Vaishnava, Rinda, Kijai, and Amman, Charja, Shila Harida, Stalker, Kijai. Prem Sakahosh, Krishna, Chaitanya, Prabhu, Dita, Ananda, Shia, Daita, Gada, and Tara, Shiva, Sadi, Gaur, Bhakti, Rinda, Kijai. Shri Shri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopa Na Shama Kunda Radha Kunda Gira Gopa Dhan Ki Jai Shri Bhaja Bhuma Nama Nama Ki Jai Shri Nama Dutt Mai Pura Dham Ki Jai Shri Nala Chal Jagannath Pura Dham Ki Jai Ganga Mai Ki Jai Jamuna Mai Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Shri Mati Tulsi Maharani Ki Jai The most beautiful Lordship Shri Shukmini Dorka Dish Ki Jai Shri Shukmini Dorka Nath Ki Jai Shri Shri Jagannath Baladev Subhadra Ki Jai Samabhita Bhakta Brinda Ki Jai Going back to home, back to Godhead Ki Jai Iskand Los Angeles Yatra Kijai. Brihad Maranga Chancellor Book Distribution Kijai. International Food for Life Chancellor Prasadam Distribution Kijai. Shri Hari Nam Sankirtan Kijai. Nitai Go Premanandi. Hari Hari Ba. All glories to the Assembly of Otis. All glories to the Assembly of Otis. All glories to the Assembly of Otis. All glories, all glories to Shri Shri Guru and Gorang. Glory to the Prabhupada. Narayanam Namaskritya. Naram Chaiva Narotavam Deving Sarasatim Vyasam Dato Jayam Hadiriya Before reciting the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is our very means of conquest, let us offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of God and Lord Narayan, unto Narayan Narayan Rishi, the supermost human being, unto Mother Sarasati, the goddess of learning, unto Srila Vyasa, the author, and unto Srila Prabhupada, who is the translator, commentator, and our spiritual master. Narshita Prayeshu Abhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavata Uttama Shloka Bhakti Bhavati Naishiki By regularly attending the Srimad Bhagavatam class and by rendering service unto the pure devotee, all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed, and loving devotional service unto the personality of Godhead, whose worship with transcendental songs becomes established as an irrevocable fact. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya So we're continuing our reading from the second canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam. This is chapter 10 and today's verse is number 4. Stiti Vaikunta Vijayaha Poshanam Tad Anugraha Manbantarani Sadharma Utayaha Karma Vasanaha Stiti Vaikunta Vijaya Poshanang Tadanugraha Manvantarani Sadharma Utaya Karma Vasanaha Sitya Vaikunta Vijaya Poshanang Tadanugraha Manvantarani Sadharma Utaya karma vasanaha Sitir vaikunta vijaya Poshanang tadanugraha Manvantarani sadharma Utaya karma vasanaha
Synonyms, Titihi, The Right Situation. Baikunta Bijayaha, The Victory of the Lord of Baikunta. Poshanam, Maintenance. Tadanugraha, His Causeless Mercy. Manmantarani, The Reign of the Manus. Sat Dharmaha, perfect occupational duty. Utayaha, impetus to work. Karma Vasanaha, desire for fruit of work. She will properly translation for this verse. The right situation for the living entities is to obey the laws of the Lord and thus be in perfect peace of mind under the protection of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Manus and their laws are meant to give right direction in life. The impetus for activity is the desire for fruitive work. Please repeat. The right situation for the living entities is to obey the laws of the Lord and thus be in perfect peace of mind under the protection of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The Manus and their laws are meant to give right direction in life. The impetus for activity is the desire for fruitive work. Shall Prophet's purport. This material world is created, maintained for some time, and again annihilated by the will of the Lord. The ingredients for creation and the subordinate creator, Brahma, are first created by Lord Vishnu in his first and second incarnations. The first Purusha incarnation is the Mahavishnu, and the second Purusha incarnation is the Garbhodakashayi Vishnu, from whom Brahma is created. The third Purusha avatar is the Chiradakashayi Vishnu, who lives as the super soul of everything in the universe and maintains the creation generated by Brahma. Shiva is one of the many sons of Brahma and he annihilates the creation. Therefore, the original creator of the universe is Vishnu and he is also the maintainer of the created beings by his causeless mercy. As such, it is the duty of all conditioned souls to acknowledge the victory of the Lord and thus become pure devotees and live peacefully in this world where miseries and dangers are always in existence. The conditioned souls who take this material creation as a place for satisfaction of the senses and thus are illusioned by the external energy of Vishnu remain again to be subjected to the laws of material nature, creation and destruction. In the Bhagavad Gita, it is said that beginning from the topmost planet of this universe down to the lowest planet, Patala Loka, all are destructible, and the conditioned souls may travel in space either by good or bad work or by modern spacecraft, but they are sure to die everywhere. Although the duration of life in different planets is different, the only means to attain eternal life is to go back home, back to Godhead where there is no more rebirth as in the material planets. The conditioned souls being unaware of this very simple fact because of forgetting their relationship with the Lord of Vaikuntha, try to plan out a permanent life in this material world. Being illusioned by the external energy, they thus become engaged in various types of economic and religious development, forgetting that they are meant for going back home, back to God. <laughs> This forgetfulness is so strong due to the influence of Maya that the conditioned souls do not at all want to go back to Godhead. By sense enjoyment, they become victims of birth and death repeatedly and thus spoil human lives which are chances for going back to Vishnu. The directive scriptures made by the Manus in different ages and millenniums are called Sadharma. Good guidance for the human beings who should take advantage of all the revealed scriptures for their own interest to make life's successful termination. The creation is not false, but it is a temporary manifestation just to give a chance 
for the conditioned souls to go back to Godhead. The desire to go back to Godhead and functions performed in that direction form the right path of work. When such a regulative path is accepted, the Lord gives all protection to his devotees by his causes mercy, while the non-devotees risk their own activities to bind themselves in a chain of fruitive reactions. The word sadharma is significant in this connection. Sadharma, or duty performed for going back to Godhead and thus becoming his unalloyed devotee, is the only pious activity. All others may pretend to be pious, but actually they are not. It is for this reason only that the Lord advises in the Bhagavad Gita that one give up all so-called religious activities and completely engage in the devotional service of the Lord to become free from all anxieties due to the dangerous life of material existence. To work situated in Sadharma is the right direction of life. One's aim of life should be to go back home, back to Godhead, and not be subjected to repeated births and deaths in the material world by getting good or bad bodies for temporary existence. Herein lies the intelligence of human life, and one should desire the activities of life in that way. Srila Prabhupada Kijai. Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimate Bhaktivedanta Swamini Tinamini. Namaste Saraswate Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvashesha Srinivadi Pasha Sadesh Tarani. Om Agyana Tamiranda Sya Gyanan Jana Shalakaya Chakshur Unvilitam Jaina Tasmai Sri Guru Veda Maha. Shri Chaitanya Manobishtang Shapitang Jaina Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Sapadantikam. Pandeya Hung Sri Guru Sri Yutapada Kamalam Sri Guru and Vaishya Mangscha. Shri Rupam Sagadatam Sahagana Ragana Tanbatam Tang Sajivam. Sadvaitam Sabadutam Purjana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam. Shri Radha Krishna Pada and Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Bitangsha. He Krishna Karna Sindhu Dina Bando Jagatpate. Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namosate. Tapta Kansha Nagorangi Radhe Vrindabhaneshwari Vishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Pre. Pancha Kopaturubya Shakri Pasanduvi Evacha Patitanang Pavane Bhyo Vaishna Vibhyo Namonamaha. Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Dittan and the Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shri Vasari Gaur Bhaktarinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. What a purport. Srila Prabhupada is expounding on this verse spoken by who's speaking? We always like to ask to make sure you're awake and alert. Who's speaking at this point? Shukadev Goswami. As I mentioned in, uh, I think it was Brigapati's class, where that the character of the speaker is also important. I mentioned that teacher that I had in school. Many of you probably remember some of your teachers. Some stand out for good reasons. You like them and some stand out because you didn't like them. <laughs> this person stood out for both reasons. He was brilliant. Like I said, he wasn't just a math teacher. He was a mathematician. The kind of person who can teach math without any textbook. Just everything is in the head, in the mind. Such a brilliant person. Black body person. Not very... You would pass him on the street, you wouldn't, you'd probably think he's a bum. Because he used to dress kind of disheveled and, you know, but... But a brilliant person. In high school, he taught, taught us calculus in, in junior high. But his character... Back in those days, you know, I was born in 52, so junior high was 60s. Teachers were allowed to smoke, so he would walk around campus smoking, but the students weren't allowed to smoke, you see? Do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> that was the prevalent um, teaching mood and parenting mood also. Parents could do anything, but the children can't. <laughs> so he would walk around campus smoking, he reeked of alcohol all the time. And so, you know, you knew as a child, even as a child, he didn't want to be like that. But he taught, like, like I said, I mean, I picked up calculus from him. I mean, it's not easy to learn. Even people go to college, they can't learn calculus. But he was such a brilliant teacher, we picked it up. He was very good. But Shukadev Goswami is not like that. Although externally, some people thought like that. Here's this teenager walking around naked, you know, so that women and children were following him and teasing him until he got, got to, you know, 
to the place where he was speaking Bhagavatam, and then they realized when everybody stood up, when he entered the arena, then all the kids and women ran away because they realized this is not an ordinary person. And that's stated in, back in the first canto. I mean, you've heard me cite this verse probably several times over the years, but it just stuck in my mind. It's not a big preaching verse, but it describes the character of Shukadev Goswami. This is the fourth chapter of the first canto. And instead, Tasya Putra Mahayogin Samadrin Nivrakapaka Ekatamatir Unnitro Gudo Muda Iveyate. Very important verse for understanding this personality who's speaking. So it says, Tasya, he is speaking about Vyasadev, Putra, son, Tasya Putra, Mahayogi. He was a great devotee, always walking around naked, simply begging a little milk from the householders to, for his sustenance. Still, he was a great devotee. Tasya Putra Mahayogi. Samadrin, equibalanced, equipoised. Nirvakalpaka, absolute monist. Ekanta Matir, his mind was again fixed in monism. Onidro, beyond material contamination. But that last line is important. Guda, he appeared like a Muda, totally foolish person. Eva Iyate, he looks like that. So this is Shukadev Goswami, although he's on the topmost level of devotion and knowledge. Still, he was walking around looking like a foolish person, but he wasn't. Just like a, that teacher, like I said, if you saw him on the street, you would not be impressed. He was always rumpled, disheveled kind of person, you know, and again, not very impressive externally, but internally, materially, he was qualified. So Shukadev Goswami externally didn't seem to be qualified. A young boy walking around naked, but internally, completely fixed and qualified. So now he's giving, imparting knowledge, and how does he get this knowledge? Left home without observing any samskaras. He didn't take first or second initiation formally. Just left. But he heard from the right source. So this is our good fortune. We're hearing this Srimad Bhagavatam from the right source. Still, although Prophet railed against these, you know, people who, not just Prophet, this goes back in our line, our Acharyas are against those who would use the Bhagavatam to make a living. And people are still doing that in India. Just last night I saw some, I don't know if it was on Facebook or somewhere, some guy, Indian guy being glorified for just finishing Bhagavat Saptaha and he's so brilliant and this and that. Obviously he's not a devotee. You could see this person is not a devotee. He's just speaking Bhagavatam for making a living. And this is condemned. This was not Srila Shukadev Goswami's mentality. He wasn't traveling around looking for you know, an engagement to speak Bhagavatam so he could make some dakshin or, you know, no. He was led, obviously, by the super soul directly to Parikshit Maharaj so he could impart this knowledge that he got from his spiritual master and father, Srila Vyasadeva. Now, Srila Vyasadeva is an extremely important and interesting character. If you look at the background of this knowledge that we're getting, whether you're looking at Bhagavad Gita or Bhagavatam, whatever, it's all related to this battle of Kurukshetra. <clears throat> and interestingly enough, Vyasadev is the sire of both the antagonists, the Kauravas, and the protagonists, the Pandavas. Look at it, if you look at the history. Because Bhishma Dev didn't want to produce, any, he made, took a vow, Dridavrata, he took a vow not to marry, not to produce any offspring. And because Vichichavirya was couldn't and died, and then Sachivati called. She remembered that Vyasadev said, if you need me, just call. Such a powerful personality. She's in Hastinapur, he's up in the Himalayas somewhere, and she just called, I need you. Boom. Yes, mom, what do you need? We have to carry on the line. So he sired in the three wives of Vichitavira, Tritarastra. Born blind because his mother closed her eyes during the act of producing him. So, from Dhritarashtra comes the antagonists in the Mahabharata war, the Kauravas, his sons. And Vyasadeva was also later on instrumental in producing those sons because 
Gadhari, she was so upset about not giving birth first, she said she beat her stomach and aborted a lump. And Vyasadeva is the one who came and said, divide it into a hundred parts, put it into a hundred pots, and then the hundred sons are born in that way. So completely he's involved with the antagonist. And then on the other side, he gives birth to Pandu, who is the father of the Pandavas. We know because of the curse, he didn't father them directly. He didn't father them directly because he was cursed that he couldn't do that. But still they're counted as his sons. Bhima saying Yudhisthira, Bhima saying Arjuna, and the twins, Nakul and Sahadev. So on both sides, they're all descending from Vyasadeva. So the antagonists and the protagonists in the Mahabharata war, they're all coming from Vyasadeva. And then throughout the narrative, he's coming and he's giving advice, telling both sides what to do. So now, he is directly fathered Shukadev. Shukadev Goswami was his direct son. We know the story there. Because he was above material life, he did not want to be illusioned. Papa says in that purport to that verse I cited, 144, about the character of Shukadev Goswami, Papa says in that purport that he did not want to be materially contaminated. So he stayed aloof from everything. Um, whereas sometimes in the neophyte stage, we want Krishna, we think we want Krishna, but at the same time we want material enjoyment. Right? We've seen or maybe experienced directly ourselves that we take the devotional service, Krishna consciousness, but we still have so many material desires. So what does Krishna say about that? Famous verse Prabhupada would cite, Krishna says, when, when one is in such mentality, foolish, not fully realized, wanting me but still wanting material enjoyment, gradually, gradually, I take away everything that that person has, all their material possessions. Tasya Adanam, Tasya Adanam. Dana means wealth. Adanam means no wealth. So Krishna says, when I put that person in that position of Adanam, not having any wealth, Tasya Adanam, Tadantyasya, Swajano, his own people, his relatives, his so-called friends, give him up. Oh, you're useless. I don't want to see you. See, if you're not successful in this material world, nobody wants to see you. So Krishna deliberately puts such a mixed devotee in that position. And that also relates to today's verse. In commenting on today's verse, Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, he says many things, but one of the things that stood out to me, he says that this protection that's mentioned, it's one of the ten items, potionam, in this mood of protecting, Krishna first of all protects his devotees even in the neophyte stage, even Vishwanath uh, Chakrabarti, Chakrabarti Thakur says, even when they accidentally commit sin, notice the word accidental, not deliberately. In the beginning stages, we may accidentally do something sinful, but Krishna overlooks and still gives us protection. So how do we know when a devotee is, is committing or has committed some accidental sin. So Prabhupada has asked that right here in New Dorka in his garden. One devotee asked Srila Prabhupada, Prabhupada, you said that um, when a devotee commits accidental sin, he's forgiven. So how do we know that it's accidental? So Prabhupada didn't answer right away, as he many times didn't. Somebody would ask a question and he would go on doing something. Or... So after some time, Prabhupada said, if the devotee comes back, then it was an accidental fall down. If the devotee comes back, it was an accidental fall down. And <clears throat> those of us who have been around for a while, we've seen that. We've seen some devotees maybe commit some offense or whatever, or too strong material desires, they leave, but they come back. Whereas there are others who left even in, from the very early days and they never came back. <laughs> never came back. Prophet initiated uh, Mahamaya when she did her research 
came to almost 5,000 devotees, 490, 400,990 something devotees, Prabhupada initiated, that were verified. There may have been more that weren't verified, but at least that many were verified. And we see again, significant number left, and many of those came back. Some didn't. So that's the situation. So Krishna gives us protection. So Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur assures us to the devotees, first of all, and even if they accidentally commit some sin. And that's why we have to have a very forgiving mentality in general, but in particular towards devotees. In particular towards devotees. If we, if individually, if we do something wrong, don't we want to be forgiven? I step on your toe accidentally, or don't, you know, isn't it, it's natural to want to be forgiven. But some or other, by the influence of Kali, we don't like to forgive. <laughs> we remember, we hold on. I've said this many times, that you have conversation with devotees, and they remember things that happened 30 years ago, and they're still upset about it. <laughs> they're still upset about things that happened 30, 40 years ago. That means you're carrying around lead in your heart. <laughs> And lead is poisonous. You're carrying around molten lead in your heart. Not just lead, it's liquid, hot lead in your heart. So how are you going to find any peace or satisfaction or happiness? Oh, I remember Bhakta so-and-so, you know, he did such and such 30, 40 years ago. So how can he be a you know, big, big leader in ISKCON now? I remember him when he did such and such and such 30, 40 years ago. So my response to such persons is, have you made any progress in the last 30 years in your spiritual life? Have you made any progress? Seriously. So if you answer, yes, I have, then why do you think that Bhakta so-and-so didn't make any progress from 30, 40 years ago? Why are you still holding on to something that happened 30, 40 years ago? It just doesn't make sense. So in order to make progress in spiritual life, we have to let go. We have to let go of these. This is just another trick of Maya to break the solidarity of devotees. Because as long as devotees remain, Prabhupada said, if you remain together, it's like tying a bunch of sticks together. You cannot break it, no matter how strong you are. Take a bunch of sticks that are easily broken individually, but tie them in a big bundle, you cannot break it. I don't care how strong you are. It doesn't happen. So similarly, if the devotees in International Society for Krishna Consciousness, stay together, following Srila Prabhupada, catching up his mood, following Srila Prabhupada's instructions, then practically unbreakable. But if we allow Prabhupada's mood to disappear, if we allow little things to make us fight with each other, finish. Finish. So Shukadev Goswami, his mind was fixed. First of all, in monism, and then when he came in contact with the bhakti path, then he revealed his true devotional side, devotional nature. He's speaking, not necessarily from direct experience, because sometimes people will ask like that, what do you know? How can you give advice about such and such? No, you don't have to personally experience fire burning your body to know it's something you, should, you don't want to get involved with. You don't have to. So a person like Shukadev Goswami, who's a nice Sikhi brahmachari, can give advice to householders because he has heard and realized. He doesn't have to become a householder to realize what the pitfalls are. He can give advice on anything. He can give advice to kings on how to run a country without having been a king himself. Sometimes foolish people say like that. Ah, if you have never been a, you know, whatever, how can you give me advice on how to do that? And generally in the material world, it's true. It's true. If you've never been a rock musician, how can you advise rock musicians about what to do on the road while traveling? You see? But in spiritual circles, it's not like that. You don't have to be a king to advise kings. By hearing the scriptures, by hearing, in the, today's purport, it was mentioned about the Manu Shastras, which give very clear directions on what each Varna and Ashram should do. By hearing, you can realize it. You don't have to personally experience it. Shukadeva Goswami does not have to become a householder to be able to preach to householders. He does not have to become a king to preach to kings. So similarly, 
if we assimilate, there's two things, Ghana be Ghana. So if we assimilate the Ghana and put it into practice, then big Ghana comes. Or meditation, meditating on the Ghana realization comes because that realization is ultimately coming from Krishna it's not because you know I'm so good and I you know went out and did this and this and then I get realized no ultimately realization comes from Krishna knowledge remembrance forgetfulness everything is coming from Krishna and remembrance is one of the things that gradually gradually disappears in the Kali Yuga gradually it's that's among the list of items that Shukadeva Goswami gives later on in the 12th canto that diminishes. Tasyadanunam dharma satyam socham shamadaya kalena palina rajam nangshatyatur balang spritihi. It's actually the last item that he mentions in that verse. This remembrance gradually, gradually disappears. And because of that, Vyasadeva had the Vedic knowledge codified, written down. Now, it's, it's funny, yesterday, uh, Narantar in his class, he mentioned this Professor Wilson that we used to speak at her class. She's now retired. So I remember clearly, this was maybe 15, 16 years ago when she was still teaching. I mentioned this in one class, that the Vedic knowledge was written down about 5,000 years ago. And she objected strongly. 5,000 years ago, there was no writing. I don't accept this. I don't believe. Okay, I didn't argue with her. But gradually over time, just by going to her class, she used to teach three classes every semester and she invited us to each one of them. And gradually by being exposed to the devotees, to the chanting, to prasadam, she loved prasadam cookies, her mind changed. She started to accept what was being presented by the devotees and being presented in the Bhagavad Gita. So Krishna gives this remembrance and in, in his literary incarnations, Vyasadeva, he codifies all of this knowledge so that we can have it at our fingertips in book form, in iPad form, even on your phone, you can carry all the books. There is no excuse not to become absorbed in this knowledge. Srila Prabhupada himself, he, I was just, uh, Bhajan Ryan Maharaj right, sent around, you know, he's famous for sending out these things as he finds all these nectar in the books he sends it out. So he sent out one little video, you probably got it, you're on the mailing list of us, uh, of Prabhupada saying that I worked so hard to produce these books. At least you can read them. He was pleading. He was, Prabhupada was pleading. Read my books. I worked so hard to produce them. Read them, please. So this is our situation. We're very fortunate to have come in contact with Srila Prabhupada. Genuine spiritual knowledge. No speculation. Just as Sukadev Goswami is speaking here, we are getting that same knowledge from Srila Prabhupada, further explained so that our dull Kali Yuga brains can at least start to assimilate it. And we should just, uh, as Prabhupada said, at least take the time to read them. Grantarashimad Bhagavatam Kijai, Srila Prabhupada Kijai, Gaur Bhaktavrinda Kijai, Hare Krishna.